So I've conducted the Swing Symphony now, I think, three times before. And every single time it gets more and more interesting. Winton writes very interesting and unique music. He melds the orchestral tradition of these two musical forms. We're discussing the Minnesota Orchestra and we're discussing the Jazz from Lincoln Center Orchestra. And these are two great orchestras. They just happen to be from, technically, from different streams. And when you find a composer like Winton who is able to just kind of weave the sounds of them together, it becomes a very unique evening. And it's a ton of fun. Swing Symphony is really somewhat a history of American music. And it starts around 1900, proto swing, proto going into uh, 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 Tim Pan Alley. And so he, he starts back there and he just starts wandering through American history. I swear there's a quote from I Dream a Genie in this, in this piece. And there, there are just little things in there where you go, wait, I know, the, no, I don't. It sounds, well, it kind of sounds like, but it's, it's very historically placed. And it's, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful survey of where we have been as a, as, as a country through music. I think the only reason I'm able to do this in this context is because I grew up in a family that appreciated jazz and I went to a, a school that is renowned for jazz, the Eastman School of Music. But the very first time I did this with, uh, with the JLCO when it was a little bit of a shock. A classical orchestra sounds one way and then suddenly you're confronted by the, by the jazz ensemble and you have a classical orchestra around them and the acoustics and the, the, the musical fluidity have changed dramatically. And you have to get used to this sound, you have to get used to that sound, and then you have to get used to the two of them together and you have to figure out how that's going to work out in the hall. It's an incredible experience from a conductor's point of view. Sometimes I just, I get to leave them alone, which is actually um, some of my favorite times because I get to just sit there and listen to what I'm hearing. And, and uh, I have the best seat in the house. <laughs> so what happened in uh, 2020, we're in the middle of a global pandemic and then we had you know, George Floyd and I just decided that I had to do something different. So the idea of Metronome was born. Their plan is that this will become a large enough organization that we will be able to significantly impact the funding stream for music education here in the Twin Cities Metro. And it will just give kids an opportunity to ex explore the creat their creative side. And what could be wrong with that? What music and beer do is they bring us together. Right? They help us form societies. We, we sit over tables with beers and we yak at each other. We, we sit next to each other in, in, in concert venues and we, we listen to music and we talk about music. And, and it's, it's about forming uh, sociological bonds. I've noticed that the best musicians and the, and the ones who are most connected to the rest of society are the ones who are the most passionate about music education. And I've seen it with people like Winton and all the members of the JLCO. I've seen it with a lot of my colleagues at the Minnesota Orchestra. And we want everyone to have this opportunity, whether you are someone who creates music, or you are someone who enjoys music, or even if you're just someone who enjoys the atmosphere. We want you to, we want everyone to have that, that chance. Because we believe it forms a better society. Simple as that.